Okay, so here we are working through Al Grosch's Developmental Math 2 workbook. We're in section 2.2, Solving Equations today. So how do you solve an equation? First of all, a review of what an equation is, is a statement indicating that two expressions are equal. An equation always has an equal sign. You can see it in the example here. An equation always has an equal sign. You cannot solve an expression because there is no equal sign. You can only solve equations. So we're going to start by verifying the solution to a given equation. You can see here, we've been given um, an equation here. Negative 3x plus 5 equals 5x minus 25. And been asked to, is 10 a solution? of that equation. So this is verifying a given a solution for a given equation. To do that, all you have to do is substitute the variable, and here we have an x on each side of the equation, with the given solution 10, and then simplify to see if the two sides come out equal. So we're going to try that here. Um, we got negative 3, and then I'm going to use parentheses where the x is, because the negative 3 is being multiplied by the x. Our given solution is 10. So we're going to put a 10 inside there instead of the x, plus 5 equals 5. And again, we're going to put a 10 instead of the x, 5 times x, or 5 times 10, minus 25. And then we're just going to simplify each side. So starting here with the multiply, negative 3 times 10 is negative 30, plus 5 makes negative 25 on this side of the equal sign. On the other side of the equal sign, we have 5 times 10, which is 50 minus 25 makes positive 25. Well, these are not equal. Negative 25 is not equal to positive 25, so that tells us that 10 is not a solution. When you get two different numbers on either side of the equal sign, it's telling you that that is not a solution. The number that you substituted in is not a solution because these are not equal. When they do come out equal, then you know that it is a solution. All right, so let's try example one down here. Is negative two a solution for this equation? Negative x plus eight equals three x plus 16. And again, we're gonna substitute the negative two every place we see an x. So we're gonna start with a negative sign because that negative right there is not actually part of the x. And then we're gonna put some parentheses and we're gonna put the negative two, which is the x, inside the parentheses plus 8. So we really end up with two negative signs here because this negative sign is here and the x itself had a negative on it. So two negative signs here. Then the equal sign. Then we have 3 times x. So it's going to be 3 times negative 2 plus 16. And we're going to simplify each side. So simplifying this first, remember this is negative times negative or opposite of negative 2 is positive 2 plus 8 makes 10. And over here, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, plus 16 makes positive 10. And this time we have the same number on both sides, and these really are equal. So what is that telling us? When we get the same number on both sides, that negative 2 is a solution. So is negative 2 a solution? This is a yes or no question. The answer is yes, negative 2 is a solution. So let's try example 2, same thing. We're going to substitute, is negative 1 a solution for this equation? x squared plus 8 equals negative x squared minus 8. Again, x squared, so the x is the negative 1 that we're being given as a solution, and a square on it, plus 8 equals, we have a negative, then we have an x, and then we have a square, minus 8. And you have to be really careful how you put these symbols in, because... This is just the x, negative 1, being squared. This negative is outside, then we have an x, then we have the square. So to simplify, negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1, plus 8 makes 9 on this side. Over here, on the right, we have this situation going on here. 
But remember, you cannot simplify these negative signs before you do exponents. Exponents come first in order of operation. So we need to square the negative one first, and then this negative will tack on. So I'm going to leave the first negative there. Then I'm going to square the negative one. Negative one times negative one is positive one. So this part with the square turned into positive one, and this negative is still there. Then we have negative eight here. Negative one minus eight is negative nine. These two numbers are not the same. So this is actually not equal. So the answer to the question, is negative one a solution? No, it is not. Because the numbers did not come out equal when I simplified. All right, so that was uh, verifying a given solution. But how do we actually find solutions if they're not given? And here we have a couple of examples x minus 9 equals 12, and x plus 5 equals 32. So the basic premise with equations is that you can undo operations that are being done to x by using the opposite operation. And whatever happens to one side of the equation, or whatever you do to one side of the equation to undo, you also have to do to the other side. So the equal sign separates the two sides. Whatever you do to undo or to, to isolate x on one side, you also have to do on the other. So that's the basic premise. You're going to isolate x. So in this equation, we have a minus 9. To undo minus 9, we add 9. And you can see it right here. And it's being done to both sides. So when you look at this, negative 9 and positive 9 actually cancel each other. And you only have the x left over here. And over here, doing the same thing, plus 9, you have 21. So x equals 21. To check it, you take that 21. You substitute it back in the original equation wherever x is. So that's what this is. 21 minus 9 equals 12, and it does check out. 12 equals 12. Over here, same idea. You want to isolate this x. So you're going to undo the plus 5. The opposite of plus 5 is minus 5. Whatever you do on the left side to isolate x, you also do on the right side. So you can see the minus 5 happening on both sides here. The plus 5 and the minus 5 cancel each other. They net to 0, actually. And you just have x left on this side. And then you have 32 minus 5 on the right, giving you x equals 27. To check it, you take the 27, you substitute it back in the original equation for x. So here you have 27 plus 5 equals 32, and it checks out. You get the same number on both sides when you check it. So we're going to start with example 1 here. These are what we call one-step equations. We're just isolating x. We have x minus 10 equals negative 5. So we're going to isolate this x to get rid of this by getting rid of this minus 10. The opposite of minus 10 is plus 10. And we're going to do it to both sides. And by both sides, I mean both sides of the equal sign. First, we concentrate on isolating the x. This is what decides what we're going to do. And what we have to do over here to isolate the x we also replicate over on this side. So we can do negative 10 and positive 10, cancel each other out. All we have left on this side is x. We have an equal sign here. Negative 5 plus 10 makes 5. And we're going to check a few of these. I don't know that we'll have enough room or time to check all of them, but we will check a few of them so that you get the hang of it. To check this, you take x equals 5, you substitute it back in the original equation. So you're going to have 5 minus 10 equals negative 5, and then you simplify. This is negative 5. This is negative 5. When it's the same on both sides, you know you have the correct solution, so this is your solution, x equals 5. For number 2, we have x plus 7 equals 1. To isolate this x, we do the opposite of plus 7, which is minus 7. We're going to do it on both sides of the equation. The plus 7 and the minus 7 cancel each other. We get x equals 1 minus 7 is negative 6. And this is your solution. To check it, you take that negative 6, you put it back in your original equation. Negative 6 plus 7 equals 1. And you simplify both sides. Negative 6 plus 7 is actually 1. So I get 1 equals 1, which tells me my solution is correct, and this is your solution, x equals negative 6. 
All right, for example, three. This is the same type of equation. It's just listed in a different order. We have negative 12 plus x equals 20. It's okay. We're still trying to isolate this x. What's the opposite of negative 12? The opposite of negative 12 is positive 12. So you're always using the opposite on both sides of the equation. Negative 12 and positive 12 cancel each other. We get x equals 20 plus 12 is 32. And you can check that yourself by taking that 32 back in there and simplifying to see if they come out to be the same thing. On number 4, 6 plus x equals negative 3. So we're trying to isolate this x. This is a positive 6. The opposite of positive 6 is negative 6. So I'm going to put a negative 6. I'm going to add negative 6 to both sides. These cancel. I get x equals negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. And of course, you're going to want to check by putting that negative 9 back into the original equation and making sure that both sides come out to be the same number when you simplify. All right, so we're going to go move on to a two-step equation. So these are just a little bit more complex. If you look, let's, let's zoom in here. At this example, you can see we have 2x minus 3 equals 5. We have an x here that we're trying to isolate, but we have a minus 3 we need to get rid of, and we have a times 2. We always do the minus 3 first. Whatever's being added or subtracted, we get rid of first. And you can see that happening right here. The opposite of negative 3 is positive 3, so those are going to cancel. And we're going to be left with 2x equals 8. 5 plus 3 is 8, so that's where the 8 is coming from. And then you're looking at, how do I get rid of this 2 times the x? Well, this is multiply, 2 times x. The opposite of multiply is divide. Uh, we usually use a division bar, like a fraction bar, to show divide. Um, it's not typed out that way here in your book, because that's a little difficult to type. But that's what it is. You're doing... 2 divided by 2, which makes 1x. Remember, this has the invisible 1 in front of it. So 2 divided by 2 makes 1. 8 divided by 2 makes 4. So we end up with x equals 4. And again, to check it, you take that 4. You substitute it back here in the original equation. So 2 times 4, 2x, 2 times 4, minus 3 equals 5, and you simplify. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. And so you can see you get the same number on both sides of the equation. So you know your solution is correct. Look at this one. We have negative 3x plus 5 equals negative 13. All right, we get rid of the, whatever's being added or subtracted first. So the opposite of plus 5 is minus 5 on both sides. These cancel, so we, we have only negative 3x here. Negative 13 minus 5 makes negative 18. This is a multiply, negative 3 times x, to get rid of multiply. The opposite of multiply is divide. So this is really a division, and I'm writing the fraction bar in there because that's usually how we write this when we're solving, is with a fraction bar. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 makes 1x. Negative 18 divided by negative 3 gives you 6. And of course, you can check the solution by substituting that 6 where x is in the original equation. So it looks like we've got some examples here. Let's look at example one. All right. Negative x plus 4 equals 10. So we have a negative x. We have a plus 4. The first thing we're going to get rid of is this plus 4 by doing minus 4. And don't forget, we're doing it on both sides. All right. Those cancel. We have negative x equals 10 minus 4 is 6. Now, it might look like we're done but we have this negative in front of the x that we, we're not really finished if we still have this negative here. We need to have a positive 1 here. This is really negative 1. To get rid of a negative 1, we divide by negative 1. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 1. I'm using the fraction bar. That's usually how we write this. And what do we end up with here? Negative 1 divided by negative 1 makes positive 1. So it's positive 1x. 6 divided by negative 1 makes negative 6. So x equals negative 6. And again, to check it, take that negative 6, 
substitute it right in there, but that's not this negative. You're going to end up with two negatives then because the x has a negative and this has a negative. So when you check it, don't you should have two negatives there. On number two, we have x divided by 2 minus 3 equals negative 5. So again, we're going to get rid of this minus 3 first by doing plus 3. Both sides. The minus 3 and the plus 3 cancel each other. So we just have x over 2 equals negative 5 plus 3 makes negative 2. All right, this is divide. It's just the fraction bar indicating division. The opposite of divide is multiply. So if we're trying to undo this divide, which is what we want, because we want this x by itself, we want to undo divide. We're going to multiply by whatever the divide is. So this is divide by 2. So to undo it, we multiply times 2. And you can write it like this. These 2s actually cancel each other just like that. And we have x equals negative 2 times 2, negative 4. And this is your solution, which you can check by plugging it in. All right, in this one we have 5 minus 6x equals 21. All right, here's the x here. We want to isolate this x. We have this negative 6 being multiplied times the x, and we have the positive 5 being added. We always want to undo the addition first. This is a positive 5, so we undo it with a negative 5. But since it's an add 5, we're subtracting 5 to undo it. That negative is with the 6, so we have negative 6x. And over here, 21 minus 5 is 16. All right, now we have negative 6 times x here on the left equals 16. This is multiply. To undo it, we divide. So we divide by the same thing. Divide by the coefficient. We do that on both sides. All right. These reduce to make 1, which is what you want. You want 1x. Negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1. So the coefficient is now 1, which is what you want. This does not divide out to be a whole number. We do know it is going to be something negative. All right, but since it's not going to be a whole number, all we need to do is make sure that this fraction is reduced. So the common factor for 16 and 6 is 2. So we divide the top and the bottom both by 2. And this becomes our solution. x equals negative 8 thirds. On number 4, we have negative 7 plus 2 thirds x equals 1. Okay, do not... I know you're tempted to just skip over this because you see a fraction here, and I know traditionally most math students hate working with the fractions. Uh, don't skip over it. You're going to need to know this on your final exam, so you need to practice them. Don't skip over it when you see there's a fraction in it. You need to be comfortable with the fractions. So first, where's x? Here's x. We have a times and we have an add. We always get rid of the add first. This is an adding of negative 7, so the opposite of that is positive 7. Okay, those cancel. We have 2 thirds x equals 1 plus 7. All right, so this is a concept that we haven't practiced yet. To get rid of a fraction in front of your variable, okay, this is multiply. To undo multiply, we use divide. But when you divide by a fraction, there's the whole keep it, change it, flip it thing going on, the, the rule for dividing by fractions. So... The shortcut is just to multiply times its reciprocal. That's what division of a fraction is. So whatever this fraction is, that's the coefficient of your variable. To get rid of it, multiply times its reciprocal, which is just the same numbers turned upside down, remember? You can see why when you multiply this all out, the 3s and the 2s are going to cancel each other. You end up with 1. But whatever you do on that side, you also have to do on this side. So you need to write it on both sides. All right. So you can cross-cancel these. They all become 1s, don't they? Which is what you want. 1x. But when you get ready to multiply this, you need a 1 under that 8. So you really have 8 over 1 times 3 over 2. And the 8 and the 2 can cancel. 
They're both divisible by 2. And you end up with 12 over 1, which is 12. So x equals 12 in this question. And of course you're going to check it. You're going to check it by taking that 12 right there and substituting it right here for x and simplifying both sides. After you simplify all this, it should equal 1. All right, on this page 47, we've got four more examples. So this is just more practicing solving equations. So let's try number one. We've got some more fractions here. And just like I said before, don't. I know you're tempted to just skip over it because it has a fraction in it, and, and nobody's wild about working with the fractions. But don't do that because you need to know this concept for your final exam. So keep on practicing. Uh, 3 fourths x equals 6. We don't have any add or subtract here. It's just the one multiply. So again, we're going to practice this concept of how do we get rid of a fraction times the variable or a fraction coefficient. You just multiply times the reciprocal. So this reciprocal will be 4 thirds. And when you write out 3 fourths x, and of course, you're going to multiply the 6. You can put it over 1 times the 4 thirds. So you're multiplying both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of this coefficient. Here it is, 4 thirds and 4 thirds. Over here, on the left, the 4s and the 3s reduce each other. Just like this, everything turns to 1, and we have 1x. It's a fast way to do that division. On the right side, you're going to have some fraction multiplication. So you can cross-cancel the 6 and the 3. They're both divisible by 3. And you end up with 8 over 1, which is 8. In example 2, fractions again. Negative 1 fourth x plus 6 equals 9. But this time we have this plus that we have to get rid of first before we can do the reciprocal thing. So plus 6, the opposite, is minus 6. Do it on both sides. These cancel. We have negative 1 fourth x equals 9 minus 6 is 3. And now we're ready to get rid of this fraction coefficient. To get rid of the fraction in front of your variable, multiply times its reciprocal. The reciprocal of negative 1 fourth is negative 4 over 1, or negative 4. Reciprocal, fractions and their reciprocals have the same sign. So if the coefficient is negative, like this is a negative 1 fourth, your reciprocal will also be negative because you want negative times negative to give you positive 1. So we multiply times negative 4 on that side, multiply times negative 4 on this side, and I use two different forms. I use 4 over 1 over here because I'm multiplying times a fraction, but since this is a whole number, I can just use negative 4. I don't need to use negative 4 over 1, but they both are negative 4, just two different forms of the same number, so it's okay. All right, over here, we know these are all going to cancel to make 1s, and negative times negative is, is positive. So this is positive 1x. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So x equals negative 12. Okay. In number 3, we have 7 minus x equals 13. So here's the add right here, and it's a positive 7. So we get rid of it with a negative 7. That negative right there goes with the x. It's not with the 7. It's with the x. So this is negative x equals 13 minus 7, which is 6. To get rid of this negative in front of your x, we talked about this before. This is a negative 1, and this is a multiply. So we undo it with division. We divide by negative 1. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 makes positive 1x. And 6 divided by negative 1 makes negative 6. So x equals negative 6. All right, number 4 is getting really complicated now because we've got those parentheses inside there. So this is uh, referring back to the last section where we had to get rid of the parentheses before we could simplify. And so this is the whole idea with equations. Sometimes the equation is not in a simplified form where you can just start undoing things. So we have to simplify this whole side first. Now, the right side is simple already. It only has an 11 over there. But this side needs to be simplified. So you can ignore the right side and just work with the left side to simplify first. 
To get rid of these parentheses, we're going to use distributive property. So we have negative 5 times x, negative 5x, negative 5 times negative 3, positive 15. Then we have this positive 3x still there. So we bring that straight down. And of course, the right side is still equal to 11. Now we're looking for like terms. Always after you distribute, look for like terms. So we have a negative 5x and a positive 3x. And these are like terms because they both have the x. When we add them together, we get negative 2x plus 15 equals 11. And now this is simplified. So now we can start undoing things. There are no more like terms, so we know it's simplified. So we're trying to isolate this x, undo the plus or minus first. So this is a plus 15. We undo it with minus 15, both sides. So when you're simplifying, all of this was simplifying. We we're only working with the one side when we're simplifying. When you're trying to isolate x, you're actually doing the solve part. When you solve, you do things to both sides. So simplify can just be done to one side, but solve or undo has to be done to both sides. So these cancel, and we end up with negative 2x equals 11 minus 15 is negative 4. Now we're ready to get rid of this. This is a negative 2 coefficient, so this is multiply. To undo it, we use divide. We're going to divide by negative 2. And what do we have left? Negative 2 divided by negative 2 makes 1. So this is 1x equals negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. So x equals 2. All right, we're going to solve some more complicated variables now. I'm sorry, more complicated equations. I have variables on both sides. So looking at this example, we can see 6x minus 15 equals 4x plus 13. The first step when you have variables on both sides, you have x terms on both sides, is to move the variables to one side and the numbers to the other side. All right, so this is just combining like terms. But you have to remember, if you move something, you're doing the opposite. Okay, to get rid of a positive 4x, you have to use a negative 4x, and that's what's happened here. And it doesn't matter which side you put your variable on. Um, most beginning algebra students like to put the variable on the left so that at the bottom it reads x equals something, but it's okay if you decide to subtract the 6x and put it on the right. Sometimes it's actually better, but it doesn't matter. Either way, you're going to come out with the same answer at the bottom. So you can see the author here showing you that he subtracted 4x to get it off of the right. But to subtract 4x on this side, it isn't going to combine with the 15. It's going to combine with the 6x. So 6x minus 4x gives you the 2x that's left here. And then the negative 15 is coming from here. And these 4x is canceled, and you just have a 13 here. And now that you have your variable on one side, you know what to do, because this is what we practiced before. Use a plus 15 to get rid of the negative 15. So you have 2x equals 28, 13 plus 15, and then divide by the 2 to get rid of this multiply, and x equals 14. And of course, here's the check that we already learned before. You would substitute the 14 every place you see x, and make sure you use the original equation when you check. Okay, so it looks like we're going to try this in example 1. I hope we have enough room here. All right. So we have... 6x minus 7 equals 4x plus 3. I'm going to get rid of this 4x because I don't want variables on both sides. This is a positive 4x. To get rid of it, negative 4x, both sides. And I lined it up under the 6x because they are like terms. It makes sense to line them up together. All right. These cancel, and all I have left here on the right is 3. 6x minus 4x leaves me with 2x, and I still have minus 7. Now I'm ready to solve. 2x minus 7 equals 3. All the x's are together, so now I can solve. Get rid of minus 7 with plus 7, both sides. So I have 2x 
equals 3 plus 7 is 10. Get rid of 2 times x by divide. Divide by 2, both sides. 2 divided by 2 makes 1. x equals 10 divided by 2 is 5. x equals 5. All right, let's try number 2. Negative 7x plus 3 equals 4x minus 19. Okay, now I can subtract 4x from this side and combine it with this side, or I can add 7x to this side and combine it with this side. And I think I like that option better because it's going to get rid of the negatives. So that's what I'm going to start with. It doesn't matter if you want to subtract the 4x instead. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer at the bottom. Okay, and you can see I lined up the plus 7x under the 4x. Now, remember, here's your equal sign, so you're doing the same thing to both sides. If you need the vertical line to help you, same thing to both sides. Okay, these cancel. We have 3 equals 4x plus 7x makes 11x minus 19. But now, since I have x on this side, this is where I'm concentrating to isolate wherever the variable is. I have to get rid of this negative 19, so I'm going to add 19, both sides. 3 plus 19 is 22. These cancel, so I have 11x. And now I'm ready to get rid of the coefficient in front of x. You're always concentrating where x is. This is a multiply, so divide by 11. This becomes 2 equals x. Is that okay? It's certainly the same as x equals 2. They're the same thing. It doesn't matter which side you put your variable on. Let's try example 3. This one's getting more complicated because now we have parentheses here, which we're going to get rid of with distribute. We have like terms over here. So we need to simplify both sides. And again, I'm going to use my vertical line to help me. All right, I'm just going to simplify the left first. And of course, to get rid of the parentheses, we know we're going to use distributive property. So negative 3 times x is negative 12x. Negative 3 times negative 5, positive 15. There we go. That looks sloppy, but... All right, that's simplified. There are no more like terms. So we can look at the right side now. Right off, there are no parentheses, so we don't have to worry about distribute. But right off the bat, I see like terms. 5x plus 3x is 8x. So we have 8x minus 15. And there are no more like terms, so this is simplified now. Now we're going to concentrate on putting the x's on the same side. Since I have a negative 12x over here, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. And I'm going to add 12x. And that will get rid of the negative coefficient. Sometimes things are easier to solve with fewer negatives. Same thing to both sides. This is gone, and I only have 15. When I combine like terms here, I'm going to have 20x minus 15. All right. Now I'm concentrating where I put all the x over here on the right. I need to isolate this x, so I'm going to get rid of this plus minus first. So the opposite of negative 15 is positive 15. These cancel, so we have 30 equals 20x. And we're going to divide by the coefficient, which is 20, to get it off. 20 divided by 20 gives you 1x which is what you want. All right, 30 divided by 20 is not going to come out to be a whole number, but we're just going to reduce it. And you can reduce it by just canceling these zeros off. That's just dividing by 10. And this comes out to be 3 over 2. So x equals 3 over 2. All right, let's look at number 4. We've got a lot of simplifying to do here first before we can solve. So let's do that. Okay. And again, when you're simplifying... You can use the vertical line to help you and just work on one side at a time. So we have negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Negative 1 times negative 4, positive 4. And then 
outside of the parentheses, we have minus 5x. I'm not going to look at the right side yet because I want to simplify the whole left side first. It looks like there are some like terms here. We have negative 1x and negative 5x. And when I combine them, they make negative 6x. And we still have the plus 4. And that's good. Then we can work on the left side. I'm sorry, the right side. We need to distribute the 4. So 4 times negative 8 is negative 32. 4 times negative 3x is negative 12x. Look for like terms, but there are only the two terms, and neither of them, they're not like because only one of them has the x. This is an x term, and this is a constant term. So this is simplified. So I'm just going to bring it down. Negative 32 minus 12x. All right, so this is the, the equation we have now. Negative 6x plus 4 equals negative 32 minus 12x, and we need to get the x's together. It doesn't matter. We can add 6x to combine them over here on the right, or we can add 12x and combine them on the left. So I think I'm going to add 12x this time. Both sides. Okay. So that gives me 6x plus 4 equals negative 32, and those two will cancel. Now I'm trying to isolate this x, so I'm going to subtract 4 here. So we have 6x equals negative 36. To get rid of the variable, the, the coefficient in front of your variable, this is the last step, use divide because we're undoing the multiply. So 6 divided by 6 makes 1x, and negative 36 divided by 6 makes negative 6. So x equals negative 6. On this page, we have some special cases. So this is some special stuff that can happen when you're solving an equation. The solution does not have to be just one number. There can be many solutions or no solution. All right. I know you're probably all groaning right now because you're like, oh, no, no. Making more things more complicated. All right, so when you see an equation... Your first response is, okay, I've got to simplify all this. The right side is already simple. There's an x term and a constant term. That's okay. Nothing to simplify, no like terms. But the left side over here has two sets of parentheses that need to be gone, and all like terms need to be combined. So we're just going to work over here first to simplify. We're going to distribute this 3. So 3 times x, 3x, three, 3 times 5, 15. Then we're going to distribute this negative 4. Negative 4 times x, negative 4x, negative 4 times positive 4, negative 16. The right side is fine. It's not changing. On the left now, since I've distributed, I'm looking for like terms. There are two x terms that need to be combined, and there are also two constant terms that need to be combined. So when I combine the x terms, 3x and negative 4x, make negative 1x. When I combine the constant terms, I get 15 and negative 16. When I combine them, they make negative 1. Negative 1. There we go. On the right side, I still have negative x minus 1. All right. Once you have both sides simplified, the next step is to put all the x's to the same side. So we have a negative x on this side and a negative x on this side. It isn't going to matter. To get rid of negative x, we add x because this is negative 1. So we're going to add 1x. Whatever I do on this side, I'm also going to do on this side. And then something special happens, and this is why we call this a special case. The x's canceled. Negative 1 and positive 1 make 0. This is 0x. There's still negative 1 left. On this side, the same thing happened. Negative 1 and positive 1 makes 0. So this is 0x, and I have negative 1 equals negative 1. What does that mean? It does not mean that x equals negative 1. It doesn't say x equals negative 1. What it does mean 
is that X has an infinite number of solutions. No matter what number I plug in up here for X, it's always going to work out. All right? This means, let's see. X equals all real numbers. No matter what number you substitute in, this is your solution, not this. This is telling you, because these two are equal, that X has a solution of all real numbers. It does not mean that X equals negative 1. Okay, so that's the first special case. Let's look at letter F. This is a second similar but different special case. So again, we've got parentheses, but this time we have parentheses on both sides. So both sides need to be simplified. Let's just concentrate on the left for now. Negative 4 times x, negative 4x, negative 4 times negative 3, positive 12, and then we have positive 2x. Okay. We have our equal sign. And on the right side, we're going to distribute the 2. 2 times 10 is 20. 2 times negative x is negative 2x. Okay. On the left, we have some like terms. Negative 4x and 2x make negative 2x. We still have a plus 12. Over here on the right, the like terms are already combined, so we don't need to change anything. Now we're ready to solve since we have both sides simplified. We have a variable and a constant. We have a variable term and a constant, so we're ready to solve. All right, do we want to add 2x to both sides? Let's add 2x and get rid of it here. When we do that, we have a similar situation to what we had on the, the last example, letter E. The x terms cancel, and I end up with 12 over here. And the x terms also cancel here because we have a negative 2 and a positive 2. But this side ends up with 20. So what do we know here? We know that 12 can't equal 20. 12 doesn't equal 20. So this is different from letter E if we look over there. In letter E, we ended up with negative 1 equals negative 1. These definitely are equal. So even though the x's were gone, the fact that we ended up with two things that were the same on either side of the equal sign told us that x could equal all real numbers. In this case, when we our x is canceled off again, but we ended up with two numbers that are not equal. This tells us instead that whoops, x has no solution. No matter what number I plug in for x up here in my original equation, it's gonna, it, they're never going to come out to be the same on either side. So those are your special cases. You'll see them in homework probably, so refer back to them on your paper here. Just to recap, in both cases, the variables canceled when we try to combine like terms across the equal sign. When we try to put all the x's on the same side, the x's canceled both sides. In this case, we were left with a true statement, negative 1 equals negative 1, which means that x equals all real numbers. In this case, we were left with a false statement, 12 can't equal 20, so x has no solution. So those are the two special cases. Uh, further on down here on the page, we're going to try uh, a process called clearing fractions. Um, if you look at this example, this is quite complicated. 1 6x plus 5 halves equals 1 third. And I know, again, with the fractions, everybody just wants to just kind of skip over them. But this is a concept that is on your final exam. Now, you can solve this by leaving the fractions in. The first step would be to subtract 5 halves from both sides. But to subtract 5 halves from 1 third over here on the right would involve getting a common denominator and all that good stuff. And that's where most of the mistakes are made. So instead, Mathematicians have developed this process called clearing fractions that allows you to multiply at the top, multiply every term times a whole number that makes the fractions disappear. 
and you can see further on down here, the author tells you to eliminate the fractions, multiply the entire equation by the least common denominator. So when you look at these denominators, 6, 2, and 3, the common denominator, the least common denominator is 6. All of these numbers go into 6. So you can see the author multiplying the entire equation by 6. He just put the equation in brackets, multiply times 6. And then he broke it up like a distributive property. So it's going to be 6 times 1 sixth, 6 times 5 halves, 6 times 1 third. And the 1 sixth has the x on it there. I forgot to say that. So it's 6 times 1 six x, 6 times 5 halves, 6 times 1 third. And again, the 6 is the least common denominator of these fractions. So whatever fractions you have, your first step is determine the least common denominator. When you multiply 1, 6 times 6, the 6 is canceled and you end up with 1. When you multiply 6 times 5 halves, you know what, maybe we'll write it over here. It's 6 over 1 times 5 halves, so you guys can see what's happening with these fractions. The 6 and the 2 cancel, they're both divisible by 2. You end up with 3 times 5, which is 15. And you can see that there. The bottoms are 1. So there's the 15 coming from right there. When you multiply 6 times 1 third, it's 6 over 1 times 1 third. The 6 and the 3 have a common factor of 3. So again, you divide by 3, you end up with 2 times 1 on the top and the bottom is 1. So that's where this 2 is coming from. Okay, so you can see what happened when you multiply the fractions out. And this equation, x plus 15 equals 2, is much easier to solve than this equation. Of course, then just subtract the 15 and you have x equals negative 13. So we're going to try this two times here on the bottom of the page. We don't have a lot of room here. Let's enlarge it, see if we can make room. All right. Okay, so if you remember correctly, the best time to use this is when you have two or more fractions in an equation. If you only have the one fraction, it's okay to use the reciprocal at the end no big deal. But when you have all of these fractions, the best thing to do is to clear the fractions. So looking at the denominators, 3, 3, and 4, the least common denominator is 12. So we're going to multiply the entire equation by 12. Okay? All right. So to do that, we're going to take the 12. We're going to distribute it. So I'm going to write this all out. It's going to be 12 over 1 times 2 thirds. That 2 thirds is coming from there. Let's make it look like 2 thirds. There we go. Then we have an equal sign. Then 12 over 1 times this term, negative 2 thirds x. Then we're going to multiply times this term. So we're going to have 12 over 1 times 3 fourths. Okay, now this is where cross canceling really does help you. So make an effort to learn it because it can shorten all your multiplication and division time. What's supposed to happen here is that all these denominators should turn to 1 because they can all cancel with the 12. So we're going to try. 12 cancels with 3. They're both divisible by 3, so we get a 1 and a 4. Same thing with this 3. We get a 1 and a 4. 12 cancels with 4. They're both divisible by 4. We get a 1 and a 3. And now you, you can see the denominators are all 1. So these are all whole numbers now. And you only need to multiply across the numerators. So what are we going to end up with? 4 times 2 is 8 equals 4 times negative 2 times x. negative 8x plus 3 times 3, 9. And this equation is so much easier to solve. We already have x isolated, so we just need to get rid of this 9. So we're going to subtract 9, both sides. That gives us negative 1 equals negative 8x, and then divide by the coefficient of negative 8. So don't forget... This is not simplified here. This fraction needs to be simplified. Negative 1 divided by negative 8 is positive 1 8. So we have x equals 1 8. 
All right, we're going to do one more. Clear the fractions. Over here, which I have more white space. Okay, the first step is to look at the denominators. We have a 6, a 3, and a 9. The least common denominator of 6, 3, and 9 is 18. So we're going to multiply everything times 18, and we're going to use 18 over 1. This is distribute property. So we're going to have 18 over 1 times negative 5, 6x minus 18 times 3x. Okay, I don't want you to be confused here. This negative sign is what turned here into a minus, so I don't need it here, too. I just kind of split it from the 3. And I don't need 18 over 1 with this 3x because they're whole numbers. So I can just use a regular 18. 18 over 1 times 1 third x. Coming from here, and then 18 times this term. 18 over 1 times 11 ninths. Now we're going to cross cancel. So 6 cancels with 18 to make 3. No canceling here with the whole numbers. 3 cancels with 18 to make 6. And 9 cancels with 18 to make 2. And now we have new terms. All the bottoms are 1, so I only need to multiply across the top. So 3 times 5 times x is 15x. Uh, and there's a negative sign there. I don't want to lose that. There's a negative sign right there. So this is negative 15x. Negative 18 times 3 is negative 54x equals... 6 times 1 times x, so 6x, we've got a lot of x terms here, plus 2 times 11, 22. Now we need to simplify before we can go any further. Negative 15x and negative 54x are like terms, so I'm going to put them together. That's going to make negative 69x. The right side is already simplified. But we have x terms on both sides. Now, in this case, it doesn't make sense to get rid of the 69x because there's nothing else over here. If I add 69x, I'm going to have a 0 over here, and everything will be over here, and then I'm going to end up having to move something back. So it only makes sense to get rid of the 6x because we have the 22 left over here then. So we're going to add, uh, subtract 6x because this is a positive 6. To get rid of it, use a negative. So that gives us negative 75x equals 22. One more step. Get rid of the coefficient by using divide. Divide by negative 75. Now this is a nasty fraction, really. 22 over negative 75, or when we simplify it, negative 22 over 75, but that's okay because you're done. So we have x equals negative 22 over 75. 